So good afternoon. Who's uh, nice and full from lunch, had the nice big buffet lunch, everybody feeling good, sleepy? Not for this presentation, not for this presentation. We're gonna get your phones out because you're already on them anyways. There's gonna be a little bit of audience participation. Just to introduce myself, I'm Thad Omura. I'm the Chief Business Officer for Astera Labs. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the company and what we're doing, just quickly show of hands, who knows who Astera Labs is? Okay, review time's coming up for the corporate marketing team that's here, they're doing well. So let's, let's keep that, let's keep that uh, audience participation up. Uh, the title of the presentation is about unleashing ideas to impact. We fully support OCP in its initiatives to really like take you know, a bunch of ideas, collaborate and actually make them happen. And in support of that theme, you know, we at Astera Labs are all about uh, supercharging this AI innovation through our purpose-built connectivity, okay? And purpose-built is a key word there, and we're gonna talk about what that means today in our product portfolio. But first, we're gonna kick it off very quickly here, a little audience participation I'm starting this thing, did I do it right? I think so. You can scan the QR code, including this year and all the virtual summits, 2020, 2021, how many times have you attended an OCP summit? Let's see it, go ahead and scan, oh, look at this, look at this participation. This is incredible, incredible audience participation. Let's see, we got five to 10 years, and can, can we get an 11 and be truthful, okay? We are gonna check, we have a way, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two to four, four, okay, we've got uh, my first time, nine, okay, one with 11 plus years. Anybody know when the first OCP summit started, San Jose? 2012 is the data I, saw, I, I found, 2012, okay. Okay, awesome, thank you, thank you for participating. So, a little bit about Astera Labs, okay, and we always like to do these See, how do we move on, maybe? Astera Labs was founded in 2017, and in typical fashion, we have the garage shop type of story, okay? Three founders, Jitendra Mohan, Sanjay Gajendra, Casey Morrison. They came out and really, uh, they're ex-TI uh, folks, uh, ex-national, and focused a lot about connectivity and learned a lot what was going on. But even back in 2017, the mission remained the same. It was really, we see this oncoming wave of AI. We don't know exactly when it's gonna happen, but we know it's gonna happen. And fundamentally, connectivity was going to change in order to support AI platforms as they go to market. Now, it's been a fantastic year for Astera Labs, okay? We hit an IPO in March of 2024 and the momentum has just continued to build, which I wanna share with you more and more about. As AI has evolved though, there's been a tremendous amount that has impacted the connectivity, and I wanna just kind of level set how fast AI has evolved, okay? So remember the traditional AI problem? Can we identify a cat? in a video, or can we identify a cat in a picture? Okay, anybody remember how long ago we could do that with a neural network type of model? Any thoughts, how long? Three years ago, five years ago? Anybody, guess, no? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the answer that I found on the web. 2012, that was a long time ago. A Google neural network was actually able to identify cats in, a, uh, in YouTube videos and actually pull them out. Now, you had to run all the videos through a model and it would tell you kind of yes or no and score it, right? Pretty cool. So, how long has it been since you've been able to ask a model, is there a cat in the picture? 2015, come on, pick, help me out. A little Five, years. Five years back? that you can actually write out, is there a cat in the picture? Okay, my data says, you know, these powerful multimodal large language models, I mean, it was really 2023 in which 
just the end of last year, which you could actually write in conversational form, you know, uh, uh, write to an AI model. What the heck is like in the picture? Could you identify that for me? Okay, it's literally like about just a year ago. Okay, so models have evolved very quickly, and it's only been in the recent times that these models have gone multi multimodal. And we're talking about not just text, but pictures and graphics. Now the question is, why is the cat running, right, in the picture, right? We want to figure out a little bit more context about what the heck is going on. And for those of you who are like experts in AI, yes, you could do this, you know, ago, but, but, but work with me here. Because we're trying to ask models to start to think and be much more intelligent. When could you actually get thoughtful reasoning behind this? Got an answer for you. Really, just last month, we started to see some of these so-called emergence of reasoning models start to be available to play with that are more thoughtful, right? They're thinking about the answers. Now, every point along the way, these multimodal uh, uh, models and now reasoning, they have all really been the market drivers for increased AI and compute. Okay? It's been one of the critical, critical market drivers because of the applications that apply for all of these AI models. Now, what has that done for all of us folks out there who are driving components into the platform and getting them out? Well, we've needed to make sure that they can scale because you need much more compute. You need unbounded compute, if you will. We need to make sure they're energy efficient, they're distributed, and of course, there is uh, connectivity, whether you're scaling up, right, as we know, making all the GPUs look like one GPU, or you're scaling out, where you're connecting multiple GPU systems together. And at Astera Labs, our mission has been steadfast. We have been very much focused on solving this problem with the most advanced connectivity. So we have solutions that connect GPUs and different components in the system, whether they're uh, chip to chip, we have solutions that are for rack to rack. We are now going across the data center with fiber. We connect now to more memory via CXL. And the big news for us for this show is we have now entered in to the fabric arena of components in these platforms. So we're now growing the connectivity as uh, we, we basically have gotten all of the connections within the devices and in the systems, and now we're growing out to the fabric solutions which has put us into really a different class of connectivity provider for these platforms. So the next market driver that we're seeing uh, in this whole uh, growth of AI is really this emergence of customized solutions and application diversity. So at first you started to see applications that emerged um, where we see, you know, kind of one major dominant type of uh, uh, provider for a lot of these solutions. But more recently, you're starting to see a huge diversity of different types of accelerators, different amounts of memory and HBM to, uh, uh, to address different workloads and different problems. And what's really, I think, keeping us all up at night is this release cadence. Like, oh my god, right? Like, every year we're going to be releasing a new platform. We used to be, you know, every three, four years, there used to be a new compute platform. Now it's every year and speeding up. And they're all really to address more and more complex and diverse models. Now one of the things that we've been able to do at Astera Labs to address this is have a platform that is software defined. So I know that's crazy coming from a connectivity company that, that, that develops chips and silicon, okay? But we have made our platform software defined so that we can easily adapt into different environments and get to market as quickly as possible. We also have a huge focus and investment on interoperability and security. All of these platforms now are going into multi-tenant environments, so putting the security into the connectivity itself has been critical. And then, what is really, really a lot of people are looking at, waiting for, we see multi-billions of dollars being built out for these, uh, these massive build-outs. All of them are striving for maximum uptime for return on investment. We want to see that the applications that are being deployed on these platforms have return on investment. But if the platforms aren't up, they're not, you know, GPUs aren't fully utilized, and really there's not enough 
visibility into the infrastructure to see predictively, is this infrastructure going to have some challenges? Is it possibly going to go down? That's where we come in with our telemetry, our RAS, our reliability, availability, serviceability. We come in with our fleet management infrastructure inside the connectivity via what's called our Cosmos software suite. Cosmos stands for Connectivity Management, Optimization soft, uh, Connectivity System Management and Optimization Software. Okay, it's built into every single one of our connectivity products. It's a unified platform so that every single product that Astero releases builds on top of this Cosmos management stack. And that has been really, really important for uh, a lot of the hyperscalers and cloud vendors who have deployed our solutions. So when you start to take a look at Astera and what are the products that we have released, to date, we're well known for our PCI Express retimers that have been deployed in every single hyperscalers and every major AI platform provider solution in the market. We followed that up with our Taurus Ethernet retimers. These are retimers that go on active electrical cables and provide rack to switch and switch to switch connectivity of very high speed ethernet over copper to make it very affordable. And we've also deployed Leo CXL controllers we are starting to see the, the big emergence of CXL, not just for memory expansion and in-memory database applications, but now for AI as inference models are growing and they need access to more memory. And also the training models need a very uh, quick recovery when the training model fails. They want to now pull that from memory instead of SSDs. And then of course, the big announcement for us uh, this week is Scorpio is now launched into the market. You can see live demonstrations of our platform in our booth. Um, basically, we are, uh, have two different versions of this device that support connectivity to the head node, as well as connectivity on GPU to GPU backend connectivity. More on this in a second. So when we talked about, when I talked about fundamentally connectivity was going to change, one of the thought processes our founders had was all of this AI infrastructure is going to go into very large environments, whether it's in the cloud, hyperscalers, or very large enterprises. And everybody is going to need something a little bit different, okay, to really get into the infrastructure. So from a, a traditional way to provide connectivity, and this were the past uh, solutions that uh, the founders had developed, they kind of followed a traditional IC architecture model where there was a bunch of hardware state machines with fixed function blocks, okay? The approach that Astera has taken from the very beginning, from ground up, is to have a software-defined IC architecture. And what that means is we have been able to deploy a matrix of microcontrollers throughout the device so that things that you wouldn't think were programmable actually are, okay? So when there's a slight adjustment in the protocol that needs to happen between two devices for them to talk, you don't have to spin one of the chips. Because we're sitting in between two devices in a retimer device, you can actually make adjustments in the device so you can accelerate time to market, okay? So it's this parallel processing of all of these microcontrollers that we have that allow full performance, super low latency, and programmability of that of the data flow through our devices. It also allows us to provide an added level of information throughout the total controller. So you can see link fleet and RAS management device, um, features inside every single one of our devices that provides the observability and the telemetry inside the infrastructure. So if you take our chips, which would be, you know, obviously the, 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 the AI platforms are based upon, and you think about integrating our chips into every single customized infrastructure management software stack. Every single cloud provider, hyperscaler has their own way of how to manage the infrastructure. Our chips fit right in there. We also take then the software layers, these are like firmware or software running on the device, and we also provide standard APIs to go right into the software stack. So now the telemetry information from, say, the PCIe links 
are easily exposed into the rest of the management stack. And you have full observability of what's going on in there, okay? Connectivity is absolutely critical. So when you think about the first feature of link management, this is one of the key things we do. We provide protocol and signaling customization to every single platform that the device is designed into. The first thing, of course, you want is plug and play and interoperability. We adhere to all of the standards that exist out there. But the reality is everybody interprets the PCIe Express uh, standard just a little bit differently. Sometimes somebody wants you to wait a little bit longer for a timeout. Sometimes there has to be other additional protocol adjustments inside the device so two chips can talk together, okay? So we make those adjustments ourselves as we work very closely with customers and therefore accelerate time to market of the entire platform because of the adjustments we're able to make into our device. Okay, this is fundamentally what, is, what has changed from an interoperability perspective and how fast we have to get these platforms to market. Nobody has the time anymore for silicon chip spins on protocol or signaling compatibility issues. Astera Labs has been able to be in every single platform because we can accommodate for all of those issues inside of our device. The next is fleet management and telemetry and monitoring. I mean, we are talking about billions of links and connections inside of all of these data centers. Think about it, right? Every single connection from a GPU out, there's 16 links in one way, 16 links in another off the PCI Express. Multiply that by you know, millions of devices deployed and all the different devices in the system. Every time there's an Astera Labs retimer in, in, that, uh, in that path, we can provide the full visibility, and all of this is on display in our booth uh, today, right now, that you can actually see all of the visibility on what is going on there. And not only can you see the visibility on the health of the link, but you can start to see our retries starting to mount up. So you can predictively address what is going on in that platform. Okay, so it's not enough just to provide the level of telemetry, but you want to provide that level of monitoring and be able to predictively do something in case there's a failure there. And then RAS, right? What happens when an error happens? Errors are going to happen in the system, especially these AI platforms with GPUs, okay? What do you do, okay? So, What's happening is the connectivity is becoming more and more critical as it gets exposed to errors. Why is that happening for, for AI? Well, what's happening is inference models now are spreading across multiple GPUs, okay? So one of the GPUs goes down in a real-time inference response, your end user is actually now feeling the pain. Before, we were talking about training models, and maybe a GPU went down and there needed to be some recovery. Maybe it took a little bit longer to train the model, but your users weren't impacted, right, at the end of the day. But now that the inference models are spreading across multiple GPUs, okay, that performance, the connectivity link between all of them, the reliability is directly exposed to your end user, okay? so. Optimal user experience is absolutely critical. This is why the connectivity, providing the telemetry and observability, and being able to get that for every single link is absolutely critical for the deployment of AI, okay? This is all in an effort for maximum uptime and best return on investment for these platforms. Okay, audience participation time, okay? This one's pretty easy. I think you guys got this. Okay, I'm gonna have to hit this. Let's get the Mentimeter going. Astera Labs, hopefully you learned something here in the last thing I just talked about. Software-defined intelligent connectivity platform enables accelerated time to market, maximum uptime, optimal user, what's it? All, this crowd is pretty intelligent. My goodness, look at this. This is incredible. All of the above. Good job, guys, good job. Okay, thank you for everybody who's not sleeping after lunch. Much appreciated. Okay, 
so we kind of went through all of the differences in the, intel in the intelligent connectivity platform that Astera Labs provide. Really want to spend a little bit of time talking about now our latest introduction of Scorpio. A lot of folks come up to the booth, they're looking right now, it's been, it's been crazy on the booth. There's been a lot of people looking at, at these products here. We introduced two lines of smart fabric switches. The first is the Scorpio P-Series. P-Series is because our customers specifically asked us for a connectivity fabric solution that can connect all their GPUs to the head node, whether it's to additional NICs, whether it's to storage. They wanted a very, very simple, easy to design in switch that had predictable performance and easy routing. Because what's happening as things move from PCIe 5 to 6, it's becoming even more and more challenging with all of the signal routing for signal integrity. So our customers specifically asked us for that P-Series in which we provided them now a switch. It's all working. Again, we'd love to uh, show you uh, this running live in our booth. But now you can also see we also introduced a, a different line, a separate line, which is called the X-Series. Because we are also getting asked by our customers that as more diverse AI solutions come to market, how can we connect them more and more efficiently from a back-end perspective? Now, the beautiful thing is from our software-defined architecture, we're actually able to make protocol adjustments for the back-end. Everybody who is designing AI accelerators is trying to optimize the GPU-to-GPU -GPU connection in their own special way. Now, why are they trying to do that? Well, it's a homogeneous fabric. Right? It's the same device on both sides of, that, of, of, of the fabric that they can very quickly make adjustments. We work very closely on customization from a platform specific standpoint, whether it's in the protocol, whether it's in the bandwidth, whether it's in the uh, different types of interfaces that, they're, that they need. That's what the X-Series is designed to do. So these two families now from Astera Labs are gonna be driving new levels of fabric solutions not only for the front end as we connect to more you know, GPUs to, to head node, but also on the back end where we really see homogeneous GPU, GPU to GPU fabric connectivity, okay? Um, obviously on the P-Series, huge amounts of interoperability that needs to take place because you just have so many diverse different types of NICs and storage devices and different CPUs that all need to be connected. That's an area where Astera Labs puts a tremendous amount of investment on the back end, it's all about customization. And do you have a platform that we can customize for, for the most optimal GPU to GPU connectivity? And it's not only about you know, Astera. We certainly work with the entire OCP uh, ecosystem. We're with OCP Safe, where you're actually like now looking how do you make the firmware and how do you have it signed to make sure that it's secure and safe. The OAI, which is an extension you know, of the whole uh, server organization. How do you get uh, advanced accelerators and hardware architectures out? We're working with a composable memory uh, group because we want to uh, drive CXL into the market in different types of applications and make sure the entire ecosystem and infrastructure is there. And DC uh, MHS really for standardized data center server types of architectures. And in lieu of all this, a huge investment Astera Labs has made is an OC and, OCP inspired solution that shows all of the different types of connectivity solutions in, and all of the different endpoints and processors as well as CPUs and GPUs, how they would all fit inside an OCP inspired platform. Utilizing a lot of the standards or a lot of the um, standards based that, uh, solutions that are developed in, with the OCP community. Please come by the OCP Innovation Village to see this platform. It's actually in the uh, Innovation Village right now and you can check it out. You can see all the different cards and we've got IO cards, fabric cards and what have you. So with that, just to summarize now, all hyperscalers and AI platform pro providers are in production with Astera Labs today. We've added on and built our business based upon PCI Express retimers, but added on Ethernet retimers, CXL products, and now with the inclusion of these Scorpio fabric devices, we're in a totally different league, if you will, in terms of our engagements with 
uh, cloud vendors, hyperscalers, and AI platform providers in driving next generation AI solutions. I hope you learned a little bit about what purpose-built AI connectivity really is about and why it's so important to have that in accelerating time to market, driving the best and uh, optimal uptime, as well as at the end of the day, providing the greatest scale, greatest performance for these AI platforms. Thank you. Right on time, I don't know if, no time. I'm saying no questions, but I'll be right outside the door if you got them.